Welcome to Happy Hour at the Home Collective. We are your hosts, Bill Ball and Kristen McFeely. Today we're going to be looking at some stats from different zip codes in Philly, the Burbs, and South Jersey, just to try to get a, an idea on uh, what the temperature is out there as far as where the market's going as compared to last year. But first, it's 5 o'clock and it's Happy Hour. Kristen, what are you drinking? Hey, Bill. I am drinking a Guinness. Just one of my one of my regulars. Your How stash you? of Guinness. At the, at the never-ending stash yeah. of Guinness. I'm drinking mm. a hot toddy because for some reason it feels like it's freezing anymore. I don't I think we went, we had yeah. this like stretch of warm weather for like a minute and then all of a sudden it just got wet and cold. Yeah. And for some reason, it, the 45 degree temperatures these days feels like a 20 February and I can't get warm. I don't know yeah. what's going on. Saturday was like a monsoon. There's like rowboats going by my house. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> cheers, happy, happy hour. Cheers, happy, happy hour. All right, so I've been meaning to ask you how spring training was. Oh, yeah, we haven't talked about it. Oh, my gosh, it was so much fun. I would absolutely go again. Um, so we stayed at the recommendation of a couple people that I knew. We stayed actually in Clearwater Beach that we stayed in a hotel there that was kind of on like the harbor. It was really cool. It was walkable to like a lot of restaurants and bars and all kinds of stuff. So we had fun staying there. And then the stadium is in Clearwater. So it's like over the big long bridge into Clearwater. It's probably like seven miles or so away. Um, we did rent a car from the Tampa airport, but then we were told don't even try to drive to the stadium because it's parking's a mess, everything's a mess. So we just Ubered and it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. We just stayed in our hotel, left the car, and we just Ubered to and from the games. Um, we went to two games. We went on a Wednesday, a Wednesday game and a Thursday game. And um, oh my gosh, it was just so much fun. The stadium holds about 8,500 people, I think. Um Good concession stands, like every seat in the stadium, because it's small, is a good seat. Every one. So I won't, honestly, next year, I, I spent some money like trying to get us good seats because both games, we were in different places. I won't do that next year because really every okay. seat is a good seat. You don't really have to be like up in the front or anything. Um, and it was just cool. The beers are cheap. Is that, is that what you're saying? Um, the beer, well, I have to be honest, Billy probably grabbed the beers. I don't know what the cost was. But they're probably, yeah, they gotta be it's cheaper than Citizens Bank. Probably, <laughs> they gotta be cheaper yeah, than Citizens yeah. Bank. Yeah. But I don't think they were necessarily cheap, but it was like similar concession stands, similar stuff. Um, and the second day we got a seat at the, um, there's like a tiki bar kind of at the stadium. So, and there are, um, big long tables that you can sort of overlook the field. So we got a little seat there and that's kind of blocked off to only people who have seats to kind of use that bar. So that was sort of fun. Um, But yeah, it was a blast. It was really, really, really fun. And the weather was perfect. It was like high 70s, low 80s, no humidity. In the sun, it was quite hot, but in the shade, it was like perfect. Absolutely perfect. I would do it again in a heartbeat. So when you're not at a game, like, are there practice? Is there practices? Are you able to go to that, or is there any Philly events when there's not a game? So I think so. Some people were saying like, get there really early. Like, I think the game starts like at one, and I think the stadium opens at eleven. And if you get there early, that's when like the little kids are getting, you know, autographs and they're, um, I guess, watching the practice. But we didn't, you know. <laughs> We didn't get there that early. Um, so we just pretty much got the game. So I, I'm not sure, but um, but yeah, no, it was it was really, really fun. And it felt like you were right there. Felt like you were kind of right there with everybody. And I did I did warn Billy, I was like, look, you know, they may be throwing in their like second string guys, third string guys. Like this is spring training. We may not see the big guns here. And we saw the big guns. It wasn't until the second day, like the very end, both both games they won. It wasn't until like the very end, like the last two innings of the second game that they started just, they brought out a whole new team of people we didn't know. But even that was cool because it was like, oh, these are our, these guys could yeah, come up. That sounds like the fun. the farm league at some point. So yeah, it was a blast. If Robbie ends up being into baseball when he gets a little older, 
it's definitely a trip worth doing. And the flight's only yeah. two hours. It was such an easy flight. And you just fly into Tampa and then you just like 30 minutes to Clearwater. It was awesome. I have friends that are there this week. I have friends that were there the week before me. I ran into friends there. I just, I couldn't believe how many people do this. I, I Until we, <clears throat> you know, said we wanted to go, that now I'm like hearing all the people that go every year. And I can see why they do. It's a fun tradition. We'll definitely did do you, it again. Did you run into John Crook? Did not, did not. Did you, you but, didn't see him? No, and he wasn't announcing or anything. But you know what was funny? I think like I got home on, when did we get home? Like Saturday night at like 9 p.m. I think our flight was, yeah, we got home around like 9. And um, I was scrolling Instagram or something the next day. And and there was Crook sitting at one of the bars that we went to. And I was like, mother, <laughs> like, I can't believe it. We went to that bar twice. It was like this okay. cool outside kind of bar. And there he was the day after we left <laughs> sitting oh, at that wow. bar. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's but, funny. Yeah, no crook, but it was it was fun anyway. Was there any like uh, when when you're not doing baseball activities where you just like on the beach and going to? We didn't even or? go to the beach to be honest okay. with you. We we were, but we went to um, we went to you know all the bars and restaurants and just it's like walkable. So there's like a lot of stuff. We walked to the beach, but we didn't like go hang out at the beach. It was so crowded on the beach. Oh, right. Also, I would say as a tip, make sure that your week or whatever that you go does not coincide with spring break, college Ooh. is spring break, because there were, I would not do that part again. There were a lot of, I, I would look into that a little closer next time I book. There were a lot of spring break people. And so it was really? very crowded on the beach. The beach itself was crowded. So we were like, we're not doing the beach. No, but I the one night we actually did, um, we did this really cool sunset cruise on a sailboat, like a real old timey, cool sailboat. I think there were like 12 of us on the boat. And it was, um, it went out, it was like a two hour kind of tour in the Gulf of Mexico at sunset. It was beautiful. And you, it was BYO. So you could bring, they had like coolers, you could bring beer. And that was a lot of fun. But other than that, we just kind of like hung out at the bars and restaurants. We didn't really. That's cool. Yeah. Well, that sounds games. good. I didn't realize that Clearwater even got spring breakers. I guess every yeah. beach down there Clearwater does. Clearwater Beach it's, does. Not Clearwater, but Clearwater Beach does. Yeah. Okay. It's just like a whole strip of like, you know, like a beach town with restaurants and stuff. And I guess everywhere there's a beach town, you're going to have some spring breakers. Yeah. 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 And it's it. not terribly expensive. So I think it's another like, it's a good spot to go maybe because it's, you, you, you're like 30 minutes from the airport if you're flying and it's not that expensive to be there. Like the hotel wasn't that bad. I could see Billy getting involved and being like Frank the Tank and do some beer bongs on the beach. I, I could see him hanging. <laughs> he didn't. He could well, totally he drink those could. kids under the table for sure. Oh, yeah. He definitely could do that. But um, <laughs> I think they would annoy him. Um, but no, it was, it, was, it was a blast. Next time, I, I would maybe go the week before just to avoid spring break. But other than that, it was, it was great. Awesome. Really, really great. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, coming up next, we're going to do some area market stats to get a temperature on uh, current activity. All right, Bill. So we've, we've been getting a couple of questions. Um, and, you know, we've been, the last couple episodes, we've been recounting some stories, some horror stories about our clients not getting homes and we've been talking about the difference between the suburban market versus the city market in Philadelphia. So one of the questions that we got was, you know, what what really are the stats? What do things look like this year as opposed to last year? And I know I've been asked this on, you know, listing appointments I've been on recently. Um, and I, you know, you and I are so funny because we're always like, we get the temperature on the street, like this is what it feels like, this is what it feels like, but every once in a while it actually makes sense to look at that numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure that I we're agree. right. And we're right. Here we go. Every we time right. every time every time I try to bring up <laughs> stats, it's like you're gonna pay us out. So I try not to do it. I know. I'm not enough I'm not I mean, I love looking at this kind of data. Okay. I don't love I'm not a numbers person in general. I do like to go with my feeling of things, but this is such an important thing to know and to be able to share with people, buyers and sellers. And so, um, you know, I, I just wanted to kind of get a sense of like, is what we're feeling out on the street really what's happening? That's um, that's the whole point of looking at the stats. Yeah. Like you want to be able to confirm your feeling. The only yeah. way to do that, like it's like, it feels busy over here. And then 
you go look at the numbers and you're like, holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, it's busy. We have way yeah. more pendings at this point in the month than we did last month or last year. And yeah, I, I yeah. get it. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not on my like spreadsheet with all these numbers crunching them like an accountant. Puke. Don't make me think of my <laughs> don't taxes. Don't make me I think about taxes. I can't. I don't want to. Right. Oh, all right, all right. I was just working think on positive, that today. Think anyway. positive. Something else. Positive Anything else. Positive. Pasta, <laughs> meatballs. All right. Let's move on. So, <laughs> yeah, but you have to like at least look at some, the big numbers. Just yeah. tell me how many pendings that we have for the month. You know what I mean? I don't have to dive too much into it. So, this was a good idea that you yeah. came up with. And I'm shocked that it, you came up with stat ideas. But yeah. I love it. Well, so, let's do it. <laughs> Something new every day. Um, anyway, so what I had asked you to do when I saw this question come through is pick, I wanted you to pick like three areas that you work in quite a bit and that you feel like you have a kind of a, a sense of the pulse and really dive in and kind of just see just some general stats, kind of where we are this year, like the first three months. We're almost at the end of March, um, so not quite three months, but where we are basically three months in at 2024 and where were we the same time last year in 2023 mm-hmm. so bill what was your first what was the first neighborhood that you chose okay so i'm going to save the one that shocked me the most for last and these okay. are not specifically neighborhoods i work in a lot but these are neighborhoods that i've been running to a lot recently okay cuz i'm philly obviously most of my um businesses in South Philly and stuff. But recently I've been running out to like Bucks County a lot mm-hmm. and yeah, getting me too. and uh, Delaware County. So even though I didn't point pull any stats for Delaware County, cause I think you're doing that, right? No, I'm doing Montgomery, but that's okay. Montgomery. That's okay. Okay. But, um, so anyway, for, I just pulled, I just did it by Yardley's zip code. Okay. So Yardley. just to recap, what's been going on with me and Yarley and running buyers there, buyers there, it's just been tons of offers, not not much activity, not much inventory. And then when there's something good, tons of people show up, lots of offers, tons of multis, all that stuff. So here's what the numbers say. So to me, it felt like there's not much inventory and, you know, so, which means you can't have as many sales. So, you know, it's like banging your head against the wall. Yeah. So looking at, so I went back, like Kristen asked, and looked at year to date, you know, going back to from 2023. So this point last year, from January 1, 2023 to March 25th, 2023, uh, for Yardley, there were 77 closed properties, average sales price of 510 Average days on market, 28 days. So Mm -hmm. compare that to this year, January to March, close was 72. Average price point was, sale price point was 5,511. And the average days on market was 28. So nothing's really changed. Yeah, it's pretty close. From this January through March compared to last January through March. And just for the hell of it, because this is not my area at all. Um, just the last year I've been running there and getting sorely disappointed. But I, I went back and I said, well, what? so that would tell me that this year so far is going to be exactly like last year and last year sucked, okay, for buyers. It just, it's horrible. So it's on track to be the same, which is not good. So I was like, well, let me go back before things got weird. And bef- way before rates started climbing, and when it was kind of a regular market, I'm using air quotes, a regular where there's inventory, Are you, you have going buyers. Pre-COVID? Are you going, I'm going pre-COVID? pre-COVID. Here? Okay. I went to 2017. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. I went to 2017, and I did the same thing January to March, and so these last two years there was like 70, you know, let's say average 75 closings. Back then, there was 117 closings, Mm. 45 more deals in those three months back then. So, you know, what does that tell you? It's an inventory problem. Right. Inventory is low. And, you know, there's no signs from this first quarter so far that it's going to be any different than last year. 
So it's not, mm. it's not great. It's not, it's not great. Yeah. News. Yeah. So that was my first um, zip I went and looked at. All right. And you would say that in Yardley, for people who are not from this area and that are listening, L- Yardley is in Bucks County. So it's north of Philadelphia. Um, it is near the Delaware River. So it's kind of close to New Jersey, but north of you, north of where you are. Um, it is mostly, what would you say the homes? The home, I mean, they really range. You didn't do any kind of specific home here you just did no everything. i just so did there's the townhomes there's big large you know there's right. a lot of it, there, new construction could, there could be like so if you're doing the whole zip code you could have everything from a development where there's an hoa but i mean the houses i've been running to out there were big single family you know like toll brothers type square homes. feet just right? big big properties yep. yeah yeah like four or five bedrooms, 3,500 square feet. Like, yep. but, but, and those, those price points are much higher than the average as well. But you're just trying to get a gauge on the zip code because, you know, you want, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. It's yeah, the yeah. only way to really do it. I was just saying that for like, for people who didn't know what Yardley was. Yeah. But yeah. And Yardley's also in a good school district. It's so there's, uh, there's a lot of desirable, it's very desirable to be there. But sure. all the other towns connected to it are going through the same thing. So it's really yeah. not just Yardley. So you have like Yardley, yeah, yeah. you have Newtown, Town, Newtown. Holland, you yep. know, Washington Crossing. All the, all of them up there are experiencing the same thing because they're all close enough to each other. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So anyway, um, what was your first one? You yeah. Did? So I'll do. So my first one, I did my own neighborhood. I did Chestnut Hill. So the one thing. So Chestnut Hill is within the city limits. Bill, you may not realize that, but it is. It is the city of Philadelphia. No. <laughs> it is the very, very, very far northwestern section of the city. Um, so it is bordered by the uh, by Montgomery County, oh, but it is, it is still in the You're, city. Chestnut Hill is in the city of Philadelphia, like Wayne Manor is in the city of Gotham. You know what I mean? It's up on a hill. It's gorgeous. See, you're you're gated. lucky. I know nothing about comic books <laughs> well, or whatever it is know. you're talking about. It. The people. You haven't seen the Batman. people. The people know. <laughs> no, I no, know. I actually haven't. I haven't seen any okay. of the Batman. Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> anyway, none of the Batman. <laughs> none of the Batman. Um, that I'm so right, not into anyway. movies like that. Anyway, okay, okay. So I chose my own neighborhood. I chose Chestnut Hill. So um, when I, so in terms of housing stock here, it is also varied so there are you know row homes there are not too many condos but it's mostly like row homes or twins which is here we call some people call that a duplex from other places but it's basically like you're side by side attached on one wall or um single family homes and some of the single family homes are really modest and then there are neighborhoods that they're mansions i mean there are some mansions here i don't live in one but there are some <laughs> nearby yeah we have um, three entrances mm-hmm. Okay. It's not a mansion by any stretch. <laughs> yeah. It is a the carriage butler's house. It, is, it was. It was literally yeah. the butler's the the horse stable of an estate, a big giant mansion at one time. Mm-hmm. time. Anyway, Don't people. Yeah. Anyway, so in Chestnut Hill, from January first, two thousand twenty three, through March twenty fifth, two thousand twenty three. So last year, there were only fifteen that closed. The average sold price was eight forty, and forty five days on the market. Now, the other thing I will mention about these stats before I get into this year's is that um, where we pulled our stats for this exercise were from our MLS, which is Bright, Bright MLS. Um, We didn't pull anything that was off market. And I will say in Chestnut Hill in particular, there are a ton of off market deals that are happening. Um, There are a lot of office exclusives. There is a Compass office here in Chestnut Hill. I sold two in my own neighborhood that were off market. So they're not counted in this. So I think, you know, 15 is light. And um, honestly, probably the sold price is is on the lower side too. But anyway, so for this year, same time frame, January through March 25th, there were 13 closed as opposed to 15. Average sold price is 1.1 million and then 30 days on the market. So it's fewer days on the market. Um, higher sale price and two fewer sales from last year. So still, you know, it's, I feel like it's, it's just, again, it's an inventory thing. There's less inventory this year than there was last year, which causes the price to go up and days on market to go down. So it's basically exactly what we were 
talking about? Average of 1.1. 1. 1. Mm-hmm. From January, out of 13 properties from January to March, yeah, okay. of this year. All right. So, wait, it was, it's going, it's, it's trending up, though, right? It's trending up. Yeah, yeah. last year was 840. 840 that's a was big, the average. That's a big jump. And this actually. is 1-1, one, one. yeah, yeah. And I know there's a lot of off-market stuff going on, too. Okay, so, I'm sorry, give me the clues again. Oh, 13 to 15? 13, 13 and 15. Mm-hmm. All right, so it's all, it's almost the same. And 30 days to 45 days, or the opposite, hmm. 45 to 30. Yeah, so it sounds like that, what would you say? I mean, it, so, it sounds like to me that, right, inventory's still a problem, and that's why you got such a giant price jump in one year. Mm-hmm. Because you and yeah. you have less days on market, the same amount of homes sold, or maybe two more. But like you said, there's a lot of there's a lot of private exclusive selling. So, in other words, that's not. I'll explain more when I get to my last my last. Okay. This will make more sense where I'm where I'm trying right. to go with this. So it, right, it sounds like it's this, it sounds like it's the same from 2023, if not a mm-hmm. little worse, right? <laughs> I mean, as far it's as inventory worse. goes. Yeah, there are fewer right. properties yeah. to choose from, right. which pushes the price up. Right. right. I mean, it's uh-huh. better for a seller, but for a buyer right now, if yeah. you're on the buying side, fewer yeah. properties to choose from, shorter days on market, and higher price point. Not ideal for a buyer. Not bad for a seller, though. So again, you're looking at right. both, you know, you have to look at both sides of it. What's um, What do you have for, ne- okay, for the next Okay, so one? the next one I just pulled, I was trying to find something in South Jersey. I didn't want to use my zip because i don't feel like it's it's not a very trendy one and so i i picked collingswood just for like i was oh, looking yeah. for like a generic like south jersey location so i was trying to do burbs philly and then where where are people really going to um as far as south jersey goes so collingswood's kind of like a, a you know well-named um city where people are running to so 2023 january to march there were 32 closed, average price point of 458 with the 28 days on market. Compared to 2024, 27 closed, 428,000 sales uh, average sales price with a days on market of 24. So it's that sounds to me like things might be, I mean, it's hard to tell. It's basically the same because you could have one high sale throw off the averages. But if I had to guess, I would say that maybe it could be cooling a little. That's what, that's where I was getting A little bit. Yeah, I'm looking at your numbers here. Yeah, because you have less less closed. And Mm -hmm. with less closed, if the average was higher, then you'd be like, whoa, inventory... Bad right. because like, you know what I mean. Like but I just when said, you have like my right, example, you, yeah, right. So when you have less closed and the average price points lower, then you might be actually thinking it might be coin. Now it's too hard to tell because the numbers are really too close, and yeah. it's such a short period of time. It's you're talking about two and a half months. Yeah, but if you had a guess based on this, I would say, well, maybe it is cooling a little. So maybe, yeah, maybe it's not horrible for buyers right now. You Could know? be. I Could mean, be. it ain't great. But it ain't it ain't getting worse is my point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing I'll mention too with these days on market, it's a little bit arbitrary because a lot of times when you list a home, you know, you'll list it, say on a Thursday or Friday, you want to run through the weekend because you're doing open houses, and then you say all offers are due on Monday or Tuesday. So you've already accumulated several days, and then maybe it's the following day that you actually market as pending. So so, so even days on market, I would say are you know, if it's a few day yeah. difference, it's not really, it's pretty much the same. So I yeah, just want that you're that right. Too. Because, and plus that number, plus don't forget when, even after it goes, after it gets signed, sometimes agents wait three days yeah. to change the status. So it's really. Yeah. So I would say you know, within a range of like five or yeah. six days, it probably right, a week, right. you know. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So my next one that I chose is another area that I work a lot in and it's right next to Chestnut Hill, but into Montgomery County and it's Springfield Township. So Springfield Township, for those who don't know and don't 
confuse it with Springfield, Delaware County, because it's completely different. Springfield Township is about seven square miles. Um, it's along the northwest border of the city. It's right outside of Chestnut Hill, so I could walk there, actually, from where I am. That's where my staging business is. We have our warehouse in Winmore. Um, it has um, basically... F- Four villages that are, comprise Springfield Township. Springfield Township is the school. Springfield's the school. So it's Winmore, Erdenheim, Flower Town, and Orland. Um, and then there are some, like Lafayette Hill and Glenside, some of that actually will sometimes eke into Springfield Township as well. So I didn't use a zip code here. I actually searched Springfield Township School District, which would encompass these four villages. Um we have some team members who live here. We have Sarah, Carly, and Deirdre all live kind of right around here. Deirdre's actually in the Cheltenham School District, but she's she's in Glenside. So our team does quite a bit here in Springfield Township, Montgomery County. So here's what I found there. Um, so from so last year, 2023, there were 21 closed. Average sold price is 606, and average days on market is 21. This year. 25 closed, average sold price is 617, and 14 days on market. So pretty close. They're pretty close. This year and last year is pretty, pretty similar. 606 and 617, um, 21 and 25 deals. So it's really pretty close. And Springfield Township um, is mostly single family homes. That's pretty much the majority of it. it. There are very few condos or twins or you know, row homes or anything like that. They're pretty much single family homes of varying kind of like styles and, and stuff like that. There are a lot of little Cape Cods. There's some old farmhouses. Um, it's a, you know, a really nice um, area. But yeah, so pretty close there. Um, this is where last year I had several deals that had to go 100000 over asking price with, you know, a number of offers in the high teens and 20s. Um, so I'm my hope when I pulled this these stats for Springfield Township was that we wouldn't we'd be looking a little better for buyers, but it looks like we're probably about the same. The same. It's going to be about the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what my first two were. They're pr- it looks like it's almost going to be the same as last year. Um, now, th- so this was the last one I did. I did South Philly. I did like. Pashunk Square, Pensport, Bella Vista, Italian Market, like 19147. So okay. the whole zip. So this was the most surprising because the burbs felt crazy, either in South Jersey and Philly burbs. And the city always, to me, felt still a little slow. Now, 19147 might be the outlier. I really do got to look at, and I should have looked at a couple other zips because I feel like it's such a popular zip. It is, you know, yeah. but you're comparing it to itself from the year before. So it is relevant. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah so for sure. this was, all right. So this was pretty surprising. So 2023, the first three months of the year, 80 were closed and 19147 with an average price point of 480 and an average days on market of 81. Okay. This year, 105 closed, average price point 595 with an average days on market of 69. That's significant. That is significant. You know? I'm actually so, surprised. Yeah. I, I checked it like three times. I'm like, is that right? Huh. Yeah. <laughs> so that, I mean, that's great. You know, it's great for... Philly. That's you know, almost a hundred thousand dollar average price difference. There could have been some projects, some bigger. And I know, I know there yeah. were. You know what I mean. So there were some Fewer projects days on in the market eights. this year, and, yeah, and more deals. 20, Twenty-five more closed. Yeah, which is huge. I mean, so yeah. so obviously it's going to start in the better, more desirable neighborhoods first. So hopefully that's like a you get like a trickle down. For the rest of the city, mm-hmm. but that's I thought that was a great sign because I it I felt it like everything too. was so slow, you know. It's like just judging by like who do I have as buyers trying to get in, you know yeah. what I mean. Most of our team is even Steph's running out. You know, Stephanie is a member of our team, South Philly, and she's running out to the Burbs lot. Yeah. So just to see those numbers for this, I was like, wow, okay, yeah. Maybe we're maybe the city's bouncing back faster than we thought. I mean. 
well, we should check these again. Well, we should at least do this at the beginning of next quarter too. I just mm-hmm. just pick a couple. Di- we'll just keep trying to like round robin these zips. I think these. I think you this know. is cool. So yeah. I was interested in the city as well because I do still the majority of my business there. Um, I looked at two others. I looked at Old City and I looked at Fairmount. And I have to say, Old City, Old City from 2023, 25 closed, 502 average sale price, 42 days on market. This year, 36 closed, 470 average sold price, and 47 days on market. So days on market, about the same. Um, 11 more deals. And the price point is lower. Now, in Old City, you're really getting a variety of housing stock here. You've got, you know, most, I would say mostly condos and lofts and that kind of thing in Old City. Um, And then, you know, your average, maybe row home. But most, most of Old City are, are condos um, or lofts. So that was, I was looking at that one specifically because I was curious about kind of like the condo market, but I didn't specify condos. I just did all residential. And then in Fairmount, which I used the zip code 19130, um, which also encompasses Francisville, which is a kind of a very different neighborhood, but it it is, you know, it's right next to Fairmount. Um, 2023, 89 closed, average sale price 485, 62 days on the market. And then this year, 63 closed, so fewer, a lot fewer, 522 average sold price, so a lot higher, and then 41 days on the market, which is a lot lower. So Fairmount was the one to me, or 19130, I guess I should just say, not Mm -hmm. necessarily Fairmount, was the one that was pretty, a a bigger discrepancy. Um, Definitely fewer closed, higher sold price, and fewer days on market. Hmm. So I thought that was the one probably out of everything that I looked at. Chestnut Hill was a little bit surprising. Um, not surprising to me because I feel like I'm doing business there and I'm like, this is what is happening. I can see it. But Fairmount to me was the one that was in the city a little bit of a surprise. Hmm. Just like your yeah, if, 19147. Yeah. Yeah, that was the outlier. I mean, so so right now for me, like the burbs kind of feel the same. Yeah, as they last do. year, you they know. do. Now mm-hmm. it could change. It doesn't mean it's going to be the same for the whole year. But right now, beginning of the year feels like last year. Yeah. So we need a little. You know, we'll get into the get closer to Q two or towards the end of it, and then we'll look at them again and see like yeah. what's going on. But I was kind of encouraged for. I mean, four seven that was huge. But it's again that those neighborhoods in four seven are. There's are some heavy ones that we a lot of buyers like to ones. go to. Yeah. So I was going to check four eight, but then I didn't. I probably should. See, that would be I would be interested in four eight and four five because they're like they're they're more like zip codes that encompass all the same kind of housing for the most part. Like four seven crosses into lots of different neighborhoods, four six crosses into different neighborhoods, but four five is sort of its neighborhood and four eight is sort of its neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's a little more it doesn't it doesn't overlap quite so much. No, that's true. Next time we'll we'll pull those for, yeah. for the south side of the city. And I and I thought I didn't even you I was thinking about Fishtown like two, Me too. two yeah. three, but I was like or two five. Well that's northern liberties, like, but two right, five two five the thing but is I was about like, two you know five what? is it gets into Kensington and, and that skews things a little bit too. Well that's true, but I just thought it, the numbers would look good there and I just I, I just felt like I already knew the answer. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, eh, I know people are still buying in Fishtown. So I'm not even going to <laughs> kind of look. Fishtown's kind of just like, I don't know. It's just kind of like back off of it. It's its, it's, its own thing. Don't yeah. you feel like Fishtown's like, feel like it. On, on the edge where it's just kind of, I don't know. It's just over there. You know what I mean? The thing I find about Fishtown is, is you, people who want to, people who want to live in Fishtown only are looking in Fishtown. Whereas like people who are, Thinking like Queen Village, they're like, well, I could also do Old City and Society Hill and Bella Vista and yeah, Italian Market. Yeah. Like they kind of have right some now. other places, but yeah. when that's when they want Fishtown, they only want Fishtown. They right. won't go no, anywhere that's else. That's true. So that is true. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's desirable. It's always going to be, yeah. and it's just getting bigger and bigger. It's spreading out. Yeah. Boundaries are getting blurred and everything else. But but yeah, no, this was actually fun. This was a cool exercise. I'm glad we got this question because I feel like. Um, you know, we always know what we're 
how we're feeling out on the street, right. as you like to say, but it's, it's good to be, to have that kind of, you know, have that made valid, you know? No, it totally is. And we'll do it again. Yeah. Yeah. And the only other thing I just wanted to mention is just a little bit, we talked about this um, before, but when you're looking at these numbers, you're thinking about the absorption rate a little bit. If anybody has any interest in that, um, what you do is you basically take the number of active listings from the last month, and then you take the total number of transactions and you divide the actives by the sales. And that will give you the remaining months of inventory. Um, and they say that, you know, anything greater than 20% is supposed to be a seller's market. Anything below 15% is a buyer's market. Right now, we're kind of, we know where we are, you know, I think with all of them, they're all pretty much still, we're still in the seller's market. But I think that um, that's just another way to kind of figure that out. So I think mid-year, we should revisit this. We'll take maybe a cl- little bit closer look at the absorption rate as well. Um, and we'll have better, I think we'll have more and better data when we're mid-year. All right. Yep. Sounds good. Well, Kristen, this has been a lot of fun, but we got to get out of here. So uh, have a good weekend and I'll see you at Coffee Break. All right. See you at Coffee Break. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, and coming up next, we're going to be talking about uh, Philly area stats and stuffs. <laughs> what, what are we calling it? That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.